Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Fireball Mullet channel. I'm Stan Kennedy. If you're new here, this channel is all about this 85 IROC Z with the LS3 LSA supercharger. But in today's video, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be talking about the seven things that I do not like or hate about this car okay now granted i love this car you know every time i walk away from it i'm like damn that's a nice car <laughs> but you know what i'm really talking about here there are some things that i really really dislike about the car and maybe hate hate's a little strong but we'll just say it you know so guys we're gonna go through one through seven seven being the worst that i hate and that's gonna be at the end of the video. But as I talk through these things, I wanna go ahead and say, hey, what's the solution for it? You know, don't bring me a problem if you don't have a solution is what I always say, right? So if possible, I'm gonna talk about either how I overcame that issue or what I plan to. So hopefully we have some plans here. So let's talk about the first thing guys, and yep, I'm sitting in them right now. Now these aren't the stock third gen seats, but there's a reason for that. And that's because I hated my stock third gen seats. They were small, they didn't really have the headrest. You know, I like to really feel comfortable. They didn't have any bolsters. They were very uncomfortable to me and I just couldn't stand riding in the car in my stock seats. I'm sorry guys, but for me, you know, I'm no little guy here. <laughs> and I just, you know, I couldn't stand them. So, so yeah, these stock seats, man, I just couldn't take them anymore. So I went ahead and replaced them with these 5th Gen 2012 SS Camaro seats. And I gotta say, these things are amazing. I love these seats. I get some criticism sometimes because the seat don't fit the car, stuff like that. And I've got another video coming up for that, which is gonna be really cool. What I did, I bought the seats and not knowing how the freak I was gonna get them in here. And then at the time, it's been a, maybe a couple years ago, a buddy of mine, Tim, helped me. He, he also bought some and he ended up making him some welding up some brackets to adjust and basically adapt to our stock seats. And actually now he sells them. So he decided to kind of make a little side business out of them. So I'll leave, a, I'll leave some information on those, uh, but I also have a full video on this. He helped me fabricate those up and man, we got them sitting nice, level, so nice. And it's cool because the stock third gen studs and all that is still the same. And with this car, actually what I'm doing now, and I'll show you this in another video, because the material just got in, I actually bought some stock fabric that matches those rear seats back there. And we're gonna have these custom upholstered just like these Beechwood sort of tweed in the center there. And it's the original material style fabric, which is gonna be really cool. All right, guys, well, let's talk about number two. All right, guys, well, number two, it's really easy. Like we all know this one, right? It's going to be the ground clearance of these cars. And you know, it's one of those things where stock height, you're probably okay. But even so, even if it's stock height, you'll have a lot of ground clearance in terms of how you can run exhaust and that sort of thing. So if you guys have one, you know what I'm saying, right? The exhaust on these things is just terrible to be able to run on a third gen. So that's, that's number two. And so what's the solution? Well, you guys know what I've done. So what did I do? Well, I put air suspension on it so I could raise and lower the car. If you're running the iBox Sport lines or anything like that, you know that speed bumps and things of that nature is your enemy. Driveway entries, all that sort of thing is terrible. So to me, that's kind of the next thing is really the ground clearance on them. And this is kind of how I drive it. I drive it a little high. And that's what I love the air lift because the air suspension I got on it now allows me to raise the car up and I drive it worry free. And so because I drive it worry free, I don't worry about any kind of speed bumps 
I don't worry about any kind of anything else. It's just awesome, man, just to raise this thing up. And I normally drive it a little higher, like almost stock third gen height, which is about, I think 27 and a quarter in the back and around 26 something in the front. And so that's normally how I run the car is almost stock third gen height. But when I park it, I bring it way, way down low, even further than this. You guys watch my videos, you know. So that's my solution is the best of both worlds. I love the air suspension. So far, it's really working out for how I use the car. We're gonna pop the hatch. And number three is going to be the interior panels. Man, I can't stand the fitment of them. It's difficult sometimes to find the the holes in the chassis and it's just it's very some of the fitment of it these little plastic screws that are in the back panels man i'm sorry guys that's just one thing i can't stand about these cars and it drives me freaking crazy but you know hey guys it's a third gen and some of those things we're just gonna live with right <laughs> it's gotta love it man it's number four what's the fourth thing i really hate about this car well, I recently did a Facebook post on here just to see if my car was the only one. And apparently, look like about 98% of you guys have this issue. What is it? Let's check it out. And for that, we're gonna go ahead and pop the hood. Let's walk over here and check this out. Basically, it's when you open the hood and you start to raise it, you can see it kind of wobbles and you got to really, but you kind of got to keep it level while opening it. So there's some type of wobble here that kind of goes, you know, <laughs> with these damn hinges, you know, from what I understand, it's just such a heavy hood, you know, and you have the struts that are keeping it up and it's just a bad design, man. It's just a terrible, I think it's because of the rivets maybe that's in there. The, the hood's very heavy and everything's just kind of working against itself. And then some guys are like, hey, it's because you have holes in the hood for the functional louvers. I'm like, come on guys, seriously? I mean, 98% of people that replied to that thread said, I got the same problem. And a lot of those guys had low mileage cars. So the hood hinges, what do we do about them? What's the solution? Well guys, I think we're SOL. <laughs> I don't think there's any uh, really good answers out there for it, except for I did see sort of one guy say he put the rivets in a vise, cr clamped it down a little bit on the hood hinges, took the hood hinges off and tried that. I don't know. I can't vouch for it. The other thing is there's a set of Ring Brothers hood hinges for $775. You got to really hate them for that. Hey, thanks. All right, guys, I'm gonna take you under the hood and show you this next thing. All right, the next thing that I hate is this damn steering box. Yep. Well, I mean, this steering box was used on a lot of different GM vehicles, and this style is actually used across different models, and it's one of those things where it just sucks, man, and it wears out. And then if you go in and, and try to, there's a proper way to kind of a, do the adjustment. I've just had bad luck with these and I'm really about at the point where the slop in the steering, this is a brand new one from Layers. I got a Rock Auto. I've had different remands and they just never really work out. So I think the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at a very expensive one. They're like 700 plus six, I don't know, six, seven hundred bucks for a stupid steering box. Turn one doesn't make them anymore. Borgeson, that's probably the one I'm going to work with there. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to kind of quickly, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, but man, this thing gets on my damn nerves. Let's go ahead and talk about number six. And number six is going to be this bitch will flex like hell when you put some power on it, man, especially T-top cars. So, yep, the flexible unibody on these cars is terrible, man. If you try to put any power on this, she will twist it up, man. Don't, don't, you know, if you start to put power in these cars, I would highly suggest, and even stock cars, I would highly suggest this. Get yourself some nice subframe connectors. Some guys get outer and inner, but that would be the solution, guys, okay? Yeah. 
That's all right. How's it going? Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. That's always cool, man. You know, makes you kind of love the car even more. I mean, it's just really cool to hear people comment on it. So, so yeah, get some subframe connectors. Get, you know, there's also strut brace. And if you don't have a wonder bar in the front, you know, get you one of them. If you race the car and that sort of thing, think about a roll cage. That'll definitely do it. Weld in roll cage will kind of tighten this whole thing up. All right, guys, number seven, I'm back in the interior, okay? Now, the number seven thing, and we all know where I'm going with this, okay, is no cup holders. What the hell? I mean, come on, no cup holders, no cup holders at all. Now, there's some different mods and solutions that you guys can get. I've seen some guys cut a hole there and get a bezel or some kind of cup holder that goes into the insert. There's a couple more things that can go on the side here. The, I think some of the Pontiac guys, it's in the door panel. They have one that's kind of made into the plastic trim there. But you maybe go old school and get the old plastic that hangs off the window there. <laughs> I don't know. So, you know, that's kind of the other area. Yeah, so, I mean, damn. You just kind of want to have your cup of coffee, man. You know, I'd take the car out a lot, especially on the weekends, and I just like to get my cup of coffee, and man, it's scary, you know. You don't wanna, so I try not to eat or drink anything now in the car just because it's just, it's gonna happen, and you know that. everything I hate about the car yeah but is it enough to not own the car and do all the crazy fun shit with this car nowhere close I love this car I'm gonna have it to the day I die and there's so much more that I love about the car so I get excited about just talking about some of them things so guys hit that subscribe button if you find any of this third gen content helpful to you That'll let the interweb internet masters of the universe know that we're doing this content. All right, cool. So if you could do that, I appreciate it. Comment down below with some things you hate about it. Uh, I appreciate everybody's support and we'll see you on the next video, guys.